Welcome to the Arts Page. I'm Sandy Max, and on this special episode, we bring you inside Pfizer Forum, the home of the Milwaukee Bucks pro basketball team. This new arena opened in 2018 and is a venue for sports and entertainment. Pfizer Forum can also be considered a kind of public art gallery. Walk around the concourse here and you'll see a one of a kind museum quality art collection. 79 artworks were commissioned by 32 artists. Many of those artists have ties to Wisconsin. The Art Inside Pfizer Forum celebrates aspects of our region and lets some Milwaukee pride shine in some unique ways. This huge painting by Tom Mosser is titled Milwaukee Made. We find out now why including artwork like this was an important part of this new addition to our city. Art is important expression of people. And we have this huge house in the middle of Milwaukee that really is accessible. And to be able to really kind of navigate a curated art collection is pretty special. Milwaukee Bucks represents an unbelievable state, an unbelievable city. We're a culture that really is objectively trying to win an NBA championship and really affect change in our community. Pfizer Forum is literally the home. So it is the physical footprint where we live. Milwaukee Bucks art collection was conceived when I got a call from Peter Fagan. And Peter wanted to bring the walls to life and how we could include the community and really celebrate the team and the entertainment and all the various events that are celebrated within the building. Our owners thought from the very beginning it's kind of an honor to have an NBA team in the city. The, the team is so open to seamlessly be a part of the community and art is no better way to integrate on a community basis. So we love the fact that our artwork really resembles the entire state of Wisconsin. What we want to do here is really make it cozy, make it home. We did not want photographs as every frame picture. We wanted really unique, really cool, eclectic things that made people want to wander around and explore and really kind of come back to. You have these amazing blank walls. How do you bring them to life? Well, you bring in the photography, the artwork, the graphics, and then it starts this layering effect and the building gets its own vibe. And how could we celebrate Milwaukee? Every piece is installed in a position with thought. We don't just put things up to fill the walls. Why is it there? What story are we telling? How does it work with the piece next to it? How much is regional? How much is team-centric? How much is current? Because you know, you're in the building to celebrate the team, but you have your fans of yesteryear who want to celebrate the history of the team. So I really think that you can play on all that storytelling, and then you find your local artists that are passionate about the area, the community, the region, the team, and they bring their personality into the artwork. It's a win-win for everybody. One of the things was to really bring it to the public area. It was very important to have artwork on the exterior of the building. We have a long Greg Gossel piece on Juno. We have another in, in the beer garden across the street that's super fun. And then you come in and on the main concourse, there's a sculpture by an, an ex-baseball player. And in his spare time, he would sculpt. And he sculpted a buck out of basketball leather. I think that's one of the most unique, incredible pieces we've ever seen. And then on the upper concourse, a lot of the time the upper concourse doesn't get loved with the public art. So we have an original mosaic. We have a photo installation from high school kids throughout the community. And then throughout the suite level and clubs, it's really where your, your storytelling is as well because you can walk those corridors safely and really be brought into the art. You've got the involvement of, of, of kids from uh, you know, several counties around the state. I mean, we've got one piece that's just incredible, which actually, you know, dozens of kids have rolled Spalding basketballs over it as the background of the piece. Some of the ways that we immortalized kind of everything from our scorebooks 
to our legendary players. So I love everything. I'm so proud of how I feel it's Milwaukee. It has that passion, it has that color, and it has that personality of your community. And that's what the artists brought to the table. It's really satisfying to really watch people stop and kind of give it that museum glare and get really excited. So if people are curious and really want to dig into the artist or the piece itself, it's a cool exploratory exercise. This gem of a building in the middle of the Midwest in Milwaukee, you have this contemporary feel, state of the art, and then you have these amazing wall graphics, these amazing artworks in here that really are the icing on the cake. It just is a celebration of Milwaukee. Local artists like Milwaukee's Dave Watkins were proud to show off their team and Milwaukee pride for the Milwaukee Bucks art collection. Now we get a personal tour of many of the art pieces on display with curator Tracy Speckaventura. Welcome to Pfizer Forum, home of the Milwaukee Bucks art collection. In the collection, we had 32 artists, 170 students who actually helped with the collection as well, 79 original pieces of artwork, and 43 unique pieces of photography throughout the building. Artist Greg Gossel created three different installations throughout uh, the collection. Two of his pieces are exterior installations. One is on the Juno side of the building, and it is entitled Brick by Brick. It brings in all the elements of the teams that play in the building, Wisconsin, the beer industry, and the team was very involved in collaborating with the artist to create the quintessential Milwaukee feel. In the trophy room, the piece is entitled Wisconsin Welcomes You. And in that, he did two different series, a diptych and then an installation of very colorful pullouts from his original Juno piece. And the third piece, we were so excited with his work, the team asked him to come back and create a mural on the exterior of the beer garden. And that piece is entitled Greetings from Milwaukee the Gossel artwork, it's pop inspired, it really has some vibrancy and it's very contemporary and exciting to view. We're now in the BMO Harris entrance and artist Anthony Rouse Wadowski, he was a Green Bay artist who's now in Virginia and as a graphic artist he was a true fan to the Bucks. When he started to create his piece, Eras, he wanted an abstract version that didn't celebrate too many notables, but there are elements in the silhouette of who's been included in the piece. The idea of installing a piece within the entries, people walk in and their, their eyes just go up and they've now been welcomed with this splash of color. We're on the main concourse at Pfizer Forum. One of our most exciting ads to this collection is an artist from San Jose, California, Blake McFarland. It's called Buckley, and Blake creates sculptures originally from tires. I approached Blake and said, I wanna give you basketball leather. Can you make me a larger than life buck? And he carved the form of the buck and then he pieced each element of the fur. And in this piece, he took netting from the basketball hoop and formed the antlers. And it's a hidden mascot of the collection. So we're now in the Mezzanine Club and the artwork behind us is called From the Ark. The artist, Brendan Minga, is a local artist. And what he loves to do is bring in very industrial components and then he adds an element of softness and romanticism. So it's a mixed media piece of art. And the inspiration behind these two pieces was the arc of the basketball and the industrial elements of Milwaukee and the city. Behind us, we have a piece that was 12 by 17 feet. It was created by an artist, Tom Mosser. But what's really cool and interesting with this piece of artwork is he had preschoolers involved in creating the piece. 
and Tom had the younger kids help him roll basketballs. What's interesting on this artwork as well is there were no paintbrushes used. Everything that was used to create the artwork were actual basketballs. We have another local artist, Rose Curley. Rose has a lot of illustrative black and white pieces and the piece is now titled Autumn in Milwaukee and she said I haven't painted with color before and I said oh you've got this. She brought in some really interesting elements and the tones of this piece really capture that moment when you're starting to cool down, you still it's brisk outside in Milwaukee. It was very important to her to bring in different locales and well-known areas, the bridge for instance and uh, the third ward and really make it personal to her of her growing up in the area. The piece behind us is from a New York-based artist, Paul Carluccio, and it is entitled sidewalk -y. What Paul does is he will go out into the environment and he will sketch and get a stencil from manhole covers. He really wanted to do something to commemorate the opening of the building, celebrating the new Pfizer Forum, and with the piece in the Milwaukee, he gets a lot of texture into his work. He really was able to capture this moment in a very traditional yet contemporary style. The artist behind us is Kevin Callahan from Shorewood, Wisconsin, and he is a huge sports fan. We really liked his work because they were almost a pastel from a bygone era, and he loved doing trading cards and sports cards. What we wanted to bring in and capture with, with his work was the history of certain eras with the Bucks. So the team was really involved with helping us select as well, and it's almost a history lesson of the team that you get with this little series and a moment that you get to share when you're viewing. When we first met with the team and the Bucks got involved, they really stressed the importance of um, combining community within the collection. One of the most amazing submissions that came through was Della Wells, and she is a local artist from Bronzeville. The fans are with us. It's a colorful collage mixed media piece that Della brought together, and one of the interesting and fun elements of her artwork is she always places a chicken within the pieces. And people love to come see her pieces and see where that darn chicken is. She really brings in a texture and a composition that's unique to her style and interesting to the viewer. Derek Carlson is an artist from New Richmond, Wisconsin. He's actually an art teacher. And when Derek submitted his work, he had never shown it before, and it was just a passion project. What he does is he'll take old newspaper articles and he'll collage those onto canvas, and then he creates his artwork on top of them. And he's very conscious of what highlights and what box scores and stats are in all of his artwork celebrating the athlete. He's really an artist to watch grow and, and see where he's gonna go with his career. And his pieces really jump off the wall in this collection. Cole Klusner is an artist from the Wauwatosa. There's a romantic or an almost a mystical quality within his artwork because it's so enchanting and the light elements brought in by the thicker strokes really accentuate the piece. What was super cool for Cole being a, an avid fan was that the Bucks actually reproduced this piece and gave one to Kareem. That's where you really can tie in with the collection and the importance of community. You bring in these moments and it affects people. So they might not be an athlete, they might not be on the court, but there's all different ways they can contribute to the building and the team and a part of the experience. The artist behind us, Eric Oates, is a resident Milwaukee artist. He's a pop artist, and what's exciting with Eric is he hadn't painted sports before. And I loved his pop-inspired work, really cool contemporary pop Warhol-esque pieces. So this is the piece that was created, and it is his inspiration of what Milwaukee cheer is to a local. The artist behind us is Rochelle Carr, who's a local Milwaukee artist. And what's really interesting with uh, Rochelle's mixed media work is how she layers in illustrative design and elements. It's very important to us to bring on women as much as we can in a project. It's a very male-dominated sport. 
So one of the ways we can do it is bringing in female artists and then female interpreted pieces of art. And what's great about this is the girls team captures the girls can go at it just like the boys, and it's a youth-inspired piece. It was really one of the pieces that is a strong representation of empowerment and how we want to give back to women in the community. Eugene Carter is a local Milwaukee artist. He is an amazing photographer, and when he shoots, he tries to find the everyday. And in this piece, he found the everyday with the help of his brother, Trey, who is our featured element in the piece, Hang Time. He took his brother out to the park and submitted this as a sample with the call to artists. And the team and the box went so crazy over this piece that it ended up in their training facility and within the collection. And when people go through the collection, they all stop and wonder who's that kid with the hang time. Margaret Muse's work are dated back to photography in an execution called Tintypes. And we had actually were staying in the Pfister Hotel and stumbled apart upon her work as an artist in residence at the Pfister. And there's different ways you can do the tin types. They can be in studio, but one of the more difficult ways to capture it is to actually take the process on site because you have a very limited time to process and capture the image. And you have to have it in a complete dark room enclosed space. So these were very challenging, but very, very interesting. With Margaret's pieces, you can feel that sense of history and that bygone era, and she loves the past. She's one of the only artists in the country using this capacity for photography. It's just elegant and timeless. The artist behind me is Chuck Weber from Waukesha, Wisconsin. He's one of the well-known artists in our collection, and his piece, Fandemonium, is an exciting celebration of the fan and the people of Milwaukee. He has amazing energy. He's a traditional portrait painter, and he's inspired by the tones, the energy, and the excitement of the team, and I really think he brought it out in this piece. People are very drawn to it, and I really think he captured the love of the sport and the community. Dave Watkins is a local artist, and we love to call him the superfan. Dave lives, breathes, bleeds Bucks Green. What he created in his piece, Colorful Past, Bright Future, is the evolution of the jersey progression, actually, in a very subtle manner to celebrate the team-inspired tones, but really bring in life and flavor and color within his artwork. And it goes to show that wherever your passion comes from, just create what you love and you'll never know that you know one day it could end up at the home of your favorite team. The colorful cubism style artwork behind us is from an artist, Mauricio Ramirez, from West Allis, Wisconsin. The inspiration is Les Paul and his guitars. And because it is a multi-use venue, Pfizer Forum, we really wanted to bring in some entertainment aspects. When we first met Mauricio, he was so dedicated to his work, really trying to preserve and cherish the art that was created. So we knew he would be a great fit for this collection. He really brought it to a new level, and the color within the piece is really vibrant. And it's just a really nice nod to artist and artist. Vidal Hill is from the Riverside community of Milwaukee, and he's really a true example of giving back to your community. His piece, Colorful Court, is a three-dimensional mixed media piece, and it's such a hidden gem that you must find this on the suite level in the collection because you're just drawn to it. You don't want to touch or intrude to the art, but you really want to because you go up to it and say, what is that made out of? And how did he do that? And when you see the dripping of the color, it's almost the, the dripping of his energy that's coming out of the piece because he really put his all into this. Dominic Inoue from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin, created a company called Zip MKE. And he creates and employs street photographers to tell the story of communities. He worked with three local high schools to create a neighborhood series. And what it did was it helped teach and educate the kids 
to look outside their comfort zone to photograph it from their eyes. And throughout the upper concourse, there's four installations of this graphic collection. And it was really cool to see the students interacting with one another, talking about what pieces that they brought into the collection, and really creating a bond and sense of community. And that was the purpose of this piece, to share Milwaukee through the students' eyes. The majestic mosaic behind us, titled Highlights, is by artist Carrie O'Malley from Delafield, Wisconsin. Really brings the elements and contribution from kids to this piece. She worked with two separate elementary schools and over 70 students were involved in learning assemblage, learning mosaics. The Bucks were very involved with what was going to be celebrated within the community of the piece and it just really highlights the amazing architectural and historical elements of the city. It's one of the most substantial pieces in the collection. It's eight feet by 25 feet. The wall had to be backed to be able to hold the weight of the mosaic. It was very important to bring fine art to the upper concourse. A lot of the time, those areas in a building are forgotten, and the Bucks were very, very conscious to include art on this upper concourse. Andy Woodward from Racine, Wisconsin, created Steadfast, the wooden industrial piece installed in the trophy room on the event level. Andy and her family have a company that creates the most amazing wood and industrial installation in venues. And it is with all refound wood and elements that evokes the buck, the woods of the area, and really has that builder arts and craft movement that's very popular right now. She had so much success, the team actually commissioned a secondary piece that they have in their uh, suite on the suite level, and you can see how unique the piece is in, in the collection. Robert Menneke is an artist from Shorewood, Wisconsin. He creates a monotone dreamscape in the texture of his canvases, but yet he was a really big Bucks fan. And the piece celebrating the team coming onto the court, celebrating within the fans, and I really think he captured that emotion and that enthusiasm from both player and fan and celebrating the team. We've given you a tour of some of the art that's on display. We're very excited that the team wants to fulfill and keep the collection growing with adding new pieces and celebrating new artists throughout the, the years to come. The robust collection includes 32 artists, the majority of them being local. 170 students were involved with the creation of many of the pieces. 79 original pieces hang throughout the collection, as well as 43 individual photographs celebrating the region, the history of the team, the area. So there's so much to celebrate and help to bring the walls to life. And by bringing on local artists, they bring their passion and their love of the community to their work. Art is to be experienced. You have a captivated audience. Let's tell them a story. Let's make a moment. And that's what art does, because it was really in a, a labor of love for these artists. And I think it really shows in their work. There are many more pieces to discover throughout the arena that tell the story of our community. You can explore the artworks in person the next time you visit Fiserv Forum and learn more about the art and artists of the Milwaukee Bucks art collection online at the website tinyurl.com slash Milwaukee Bucks art. If you can't wait to see another episode of the arts page, you can stream any of our over 200 previous episodes online when you visit the Milwaukee PBS website at milwaukeepbs.org and click on the arts page. You can find Milwaukee PBS on Facebook too. Special thanks to the Milwaukee Bucks, the staff at Pfizer Forum, and the women of sports and the arts for their hospitality and for showcasing the impressive and diverse arts culture we have right here in Wisconsin. I'm Sandy Max. Thank you for watching and please join us next time for another half hour full of art on the arts page.
Milwaukee PBS, working here, it really is a community and it's fun to chat with other producers of the other shows, Adelante, Around the Corner, Outdoor Wisconsin, Black Nouveau. We all have the same excitement to tell stories and we all can't do it if there is not support, not just moral support and hearing people come up to you and go, I watch your show, I really enjoy it. That's meaningful and that puffs us up and, and gets us going and we want to go out there and make more shows. But if you believe in what Milwaukee PBS is and what we do in telling stories about Milwaukee, then that's when your annual membership of any level, it really does make a difference because it costs money to get cameras out in the field and to make the arrangements and interview people and really get stories to you. It does cost money. And when we say things like, made possible by viewers like you, like we really mean it. And if Milwaukee PBS is something you believe in, it's a membership you should belong to because it really is a community, not just in the building, but all the other viewers. When we get together, it's really rewarding and enriching to know that the shows that we're bringing do make a difference.